2024. Let's talk about how to get all the money you need to do all the cool things you're going to do in 2024 to make this the best year ever. Today, we are going to dive in and decode exactly what you need to know to map out a flawless business financing plan for your business in 2024. We're going to talk about the best kind of financing, the hottest, coolest, newest kind of financing that's happening right now that you could tap into that most people don't even know about. And we're going to really talk about the actual steps you need to go through or should go through to really figure out how much money you're going to need, where to get it, how to get it for 2024. Look, you're probably going to be doing some super cool things. And if you're like me, you're looking to make next year your best year ever in business. But you and I both know that it takes money to be able to actually make that happen. And we've got to talk about how you can get all the money you want, even more money than what you need to be able to execute this plan. So that's exactly what we're going to do during today's training is map out the flawless perfect business financing plan for you in 2024. So the very first thing is, is you don't want to go into the new year and not have an idea of what you need money for and how you're going to get that money. So many times I see people reactive in the financing world. And what I mean by that is that they're actually just trying to react when they need money. They're trying to desperately go out and get it. Instead of being proactive and having a plan to get the money, have it there available for the things that they're actually going to need. So this is why you really want to have a financing plan. It's a win-win situation for you because you're able to map out what you need money for, how much money you need, and get started before you need the money. So when those things come up or when unexpected opportunities or unexpected expenses come up, you have the money to be able to navigate this. Look, it's interesting because we've helped 50,000 plus business owners get business credit financing. And what we found is that the ones that have the most success are not uh, desperately out there trying to get money. They're not reacting. Don't get me wrong. If you're desperate, you need money quickly, you can get it. The problem is you're going to pay a hefty price for that. I don't want you to have to pay a hefty price. I want you to be able to get the money you need at the absolute best terms. And by the way, if you're just coming in, tell me where you're coming in from. Give me your company name and I'm going to give you a shout out. So again, what we need to do is figure out exactly what our plan is going to be for 2024. Where do we start? Well, the very first thing is let's look at projections. You really should be thinking about what you are going to do to be able to make the money that you want to make next year. What are you going to make next year? Are you going to make 100 thousand you're going to make a million you're going to make 10 million what is your goal and if you start with the goal of what money you're going to make you're able to work it backwards to figure out how to actually execute that goal now we do this for our partners it's called a map a massive action plan where we have them start with how much money they want to make a month or how much money they want to make a year then we start working backwards to figure out how many sales that would be how many presentations that would be how many prospects they need to speak to and then what is their massive action plan what is their marketing plan to be able to get in front of that many people and it makes it simple because instead of saying i'm going to make a million dollars next year and then you know trying to just go out and do what you've been doing and hoping that that works better to get to you than a million dollars now you're able to say hey to make a million dollars i've got to make this many sales and that means i got to do this many presentations and that means i got to talk to this many people and then all of a sudden you break it down you're like that's not hard to do like if i talk to three to five people a day then i could get to my goal what am i going to do to get in front of those people so it's a really good way to map out a plan of where you're going to be where you want to be and exactly how you're going to get there and by the way big globe communication llc is in the house from phoenix thanks for coming in burrell nelson from san antonio is in the house and jeremy hey man come in thanks for coming in from trusted business advisors llc from detroit michigan appreciate everybody coming in and if you're just coming in come in and say hi i'd like to know where you're coming from give you a shout out right here on the stream and then like thousands of people see the replay and then you get like free promotion you can't win from that right okay so you've got to have a projection you got to know what kind of what you're going to do for money uh, or what your kind of revenue you want to generate what your plan is to actually do to be able to get there now on top of that that's going to help you determine your funding needs so if i know that i'm going to launch a digital marketing campaign with facebook well then i can start saying hey if i want to get in front of this many people i'm probably going to need to spend this much money and how much of that are you going to spend out of your pocket? How much do you need funding for? Maybe you're going to go to networking groups. Maybe you want to be part of BNI and there's a cost to get involved in BNI. Maybe you're going to wrap your vehicle and you're going to park it in front of 
uh, the building where it gets you a lot of exposure. Whatever it may be that your plan is, it's going to start to give you an idea of what the costs are associated with that plan. And that's a good idea. Are you going to make an acquisition? Are you going to expand? Are you going to hire new team members? Do you need to buy equipment? What are the things that you're going to be doing in 2024? Log that along with your projections. And this is going to give you an idea of the things that are going to cost you money. And now we say, okay, we know where we want to be. We know the revenue we want to generate. We know what we're going to do to generate the revenue. We know what the cost is to be able to execute those steps to be able to generate that revenue. Now we know what it's going to cost us. Now we have a pretty good idea of the actual money that we're going to need. And that's one of the things we want to figure out here is how much money do you actually need to do those things? Now, the next thing is when you figure that out, then the next step is how are we going to get the money? Now, if we look, mark this backwards, we figured out the revenue that we want. We figured out the things we need to do to get that revenue. We figured out how much money it's going to cost us to do the things that are going to generate our dream revenue. And now we just know how much money we're going to need in funding to be able to do those things. So the next thing we want to look at is what are the sources of that funding? What are we going to do? Where are we going to get the money from? Easiest way I can explain this. And by the way, Daisy Made Cakes. I love that Daisy Made Cakes LLC. Thanks for coming in. And Chicago Heat 3.0 Pilates. I love that name. And Lincoln Park and the Pilates Experience in Skokie. Skokie? Sk 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 Is that right, Susan? Skokie? I think I pronounced that right. Marvin, thanks for coming in. Um, you want to be a student and affiliate, then email us. Info at creditsuite.com. I'd love to be able to talk to you more. It's my email. And Lori's coming in. Good afternoon. LZN Enterprises from Maryland is in the house. And Marvin from Laura Assets LLC. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. So now we've got to figure out where we're going to get the money. And I'm going to teach you some secrets here that most people do not know. When it comes to getting money, we want to go with the lowest hanging fruit first. I mean, we want to start with the easiest to get money we can get. And then that leaves a smaller amount of money that we need to get from, like, banks and credit lines and money that's harder to get. So there's just money that's easier to get business credit cards, for example, and there's money that's harder to get, business credit lines, for example. So what we want to do is we want to be able to find the easiest way to pay for the stuff that we need. And then when we do that using, for example, business credit cards, then we reduce down the amount that we need for payroll, for example, that we can't use credit cards for. And then we need a smaller amount to get from loans and credit lines. So what I like to say is that map out everything that you really think you're going to be spending money on in the next year. Not everything that you're going to spend money on, but what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be expanding? Well, good. Then you might need computers and desks and furniture. Are you looking to buy new equipment? Great. How much is that equipment going to cost you? Are you looking to buy a new 18-wheeler because you're an over-the-road trucker? Are you looking to launch a new business and what's involved in that? Map out every bit of what you think you're going to need the money for. Then let's look at the easiest financing to get for those things down to the most difficult. So the easiest type of financing to get, it's business credit. It's just easy. Why? Because business credit, you don't need cash flow. You can get it as a new business. You don't need to verify any income. You don't need uh, any kind of credit. You don't need good credit. They don't even do credit checks. So no matter how good or bad your credit may be, you are still able to get it. And you don't need collateral. It's unsecured. So you don't need something to collateralize the debt. So this is just easy money to get because most of the stuff that lenders look at, you don't need. You don't need it. And you can start getting business credit very quickly. So if you're following the steps, and we've got a great guide at, and I'll throw it up on the screen here, creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. It's a 100% free guide, been downloaded uh, over a million times. So this maps out the steps for you to actually be able to come in and build business credit. I don't have time to call, talk about all that today, but this will give you some insight on that. So we want, we're going to able to start getting vendor credit right away. We're able to get credit right away is business, for business credit to buy swag, to buy office supplies, to buy marketing. Like legitimately, we can get credit lines to run Facebook and Google ads while building business credit. Those are starter vendors. We can get fuel cards and so many other things as well. So when we map out what we need, we're able to say, hey, I need furniture or I need computers or I need desks or I need office supplies or I need this or that. And let's look and see, can we get that, especially at a vendor? So there's a few types of business credit we want to look at. We look at first vendor credit. This is like 80% of what business credit is. And vendor credit are like credit from vendors. They're people that sell, give you credit lines to buy their stuff. 
So examples of vendors, name a retailer, right? Staples, Office Depot, Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, Sam's Club, Nordstrom, Macy's, Apple, Best Buy. Any retailer offers these kind of vendor credit cards. So what we want to think about is what do we need to buy money? What do we need to use money for? And then like, where are we going to get that stuff? If I say I need a desk, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to Ikea? Am I going to go to Staples? Am I going to go to Amazon? All of them offer corporate credit cards. So when we have a list of what we need, we're able to start saying, hey, business credit can pay for a lot of that stuff. So now we know that business credit is probably going to be the best solution to be able to get that. Now we know that business credit can pay for all of that stuff. Now, another type of business credit is called fleet credit. If you're a transportation industry, if you drive a vehicle a lot, this matters because it pays for fuel and repair and maintenance of vehicles. So if any of the things on your list that you need to spend money on in 2024 include those things, well, fleet credit cards will get you what you need. Uh, we also get auto financing. So one of our clients got $350,000 in auto financing with no personal guarantee, no personal credit check. It's interesting because he started wanting one vehicle for himself and then ended up launching a Turo business because he got so much funding. So again, do you need auto financing for something? Do you need a Visa card or a MasterCard or American Express for something? That's called universal credit. And those are the main types of business credit we see. We see the vendor credit, credit at every major retailer. We see fleet credit, credit at almost every major fuel station in the country. We see Visa, MasterCard, universal credit, and we see auto financing. So the things that you need to spend money for isn't in any of these categories. Does any retailer sell you the stuff that you need to buy? Is it related about buying a vehicle or maintaining or fueling that vehicle? Is it something a Visa or MasterCard or an Amex can pay for? If it is, put that in the business credit source of funding solution. We'll have another category in our log and say, where are we going to get the money? Business credit, business credit, business credit, business credit. Now, I like to do this because if you really look at what you need to spend money on, you're going to find that nearly 90% of what you need to spend money on, business credit can get. And that's fantastic because we can get business credit with no personal guarantee. We're not personally liable for the debt. We can get it when we can't get any other kind of financing. We can get it when we're just a brand new startup business and we got bad credit and we've been turned down before. It's just like a catch-all solution. The other cool thing is by building the business credit and getting the money we need to buy all these things, we're also creating a credit profile for our business that makes it easier for us to get loans and credit lines. And that's the next part of the sources of funding. The next thing is, is of this list, now we've accounted for a lot of the things that business credit could buy. Now we've got some things business credit probably isn't the best for. Let's say commercial real estate. Let's say equipment. Now, what's nice about this is that equipment and real estate, there's specialized financing for these type of things. So there's specialized financing that could pay for all the inventory for an e-commerce business. So maybe you're launching an Amazon store. Well, there's special financing that could pay up for 100% of the inventory in that actual Amazon store. Maybe you're trying to buy a vehicle. We talked about auto financing, right? Maybe you're trying to buy commercial real estate. You want to buy the property that you're renting now. So there's specialized funding for the purpose of acquiring that stuff. We don't want to go get a credit line to buy equipment when there's equipment financing that can absolutely pay for that for us. So we want to look at the specialized financing. Do you need inventory? Do you need equipment? Do you need real estate? Well, there's specialized financing we can get for all of that stuff. And so now we say, okay, we want commercial real estate financing for that. We want equipment financing for that. We want, uh, we want to be able to get inventory financing for that. This financing is fairly easy to get, even if we have bad credit and we've been denied before. And now all of a sudden, these major purchases we may need, inventory and, and equipment, all these things, we actually can get specialized financing for that. Now, now we're left with a very smaller amount of things that we need to buy that could, business credit couldn't buy and specialized funding couldn't get for us either. Now we start to look at loans and credit lines. And on our log, we want to put loan-credit lines. We need a loan or a credit line for this amount. Now, if we've done all this properly, and by, by the way, hey, premium coaching for new tax pros is coming in from Rockford, Illinois. Thank you for saying hey. And uh, Lara Assets from Miami is in the house. And Christy Colt, entrepreneur, uh, just initiating my journey. I love your content. Been watching you for a while. Thank you very much, Christy. I appreciate that. And Jeremy says, hey, my plan is to educate myself on how I can create a line of credit to fund my business between 200000 and 400000 to generate a monthly residual of 15000 to $20,000, right? So, and uh, Marvin says 20000 per month in revenue is what Marvin's goal is for the year. So I love all of this. So I'm going to show Jeremy's comment because this is why I'm teaching you the plan. You see, the reality is, 
is that a lot of entrepreneurs think exactly like Jeremy is here. And they say, my goal is to get a big line of credit. And the reality is, is that when we're doing this, because we just want to eat kind of the easy way out, we want one line of credit that could potentially pay for everything in the business that we just walked through. We want something that'll pay for the expansion and for the computers and for the, the desks and for everything else. But the reality is, is that if we're looking for two to 400,000, let's say in financing, then in order to get to that point, you oftentimes may need to have a business worth multi, many millions of dollars to get there, right? So if we look at, just for example, if you say, I need to get all of the money I need from only one source. Well, the problem there is, is you're going to have to generate a crap load of revenue to be able to get that. So let's say I want $500,000. Let's say I just want $100,000. Well, oftentimes a lot of these lenders will lend like, 10% of your revenue or 15% of your revenue. So in that case, in order to get a hundred thousand dollar credit line, you'd realistically be need to be doing a million dollars in top end revenue. And you'd have to have really, really, really high, uh, good profit margins as well, where you're showing profit. Let's be honest. You might not be in that position. You not, might not be generating millions in revenue. You might not be generating hundreds of thousands of dollars yet in profit. So with that being the case, it's really tough to get all of the money you need from one source, one loan or one credit line, because you typically don't generate enough revenue to justify that high of a loan amount or credit line amount, which by the way, is why so many people get failed to get the financing. One of the biggest secrets I will teach you is as entrepreneurs, stop trying to get all of your money from one source. Stop trying to get all your money from one loan or stop trying to get money, all your money from one credit line. You're making it significantly harder than it has to be to be able to get the money you need. What I'm doing is mapping out a plan that will actually really work because you're able to pay for all of this stuff that business credit will pay for. And now all of a sudden you might not need a hundred thousand dollar credit line. Now, when you start narrowing it down, you're like, okay, business credit paid for all this. Then I got equipment financing and inventory for all this, but I need a down payment for the equipment. And I need to buy, get pay for payroll. And when you start narrowing it down, you don't need a hundred grand. You only need 10 grand. Well, it's way easier to get a loan for 10 or 20,000 than it is a hundred. So this is a plan that will actually work to get you what you need versus trying to get all of your money from one source, which probably isn't going to happen realistically in my time in doing this and helping you know, a lot of people for a lot of time. What I find is most people want a loan or credit line for worth substantially more than they can actually qualify for. So let me give you an example. I'll give you an example. Credit Suite right now is getting a line of credit. We're, we're finishing up closing on the line of credit. The line of credit we're getting is $150,000. That's pretty good, right? But what does it take to get there? Well, we have a business that does over $10 million in sales. So in order to get $150,000 credit line, you're doing an eight, nine, $10 million business. That just gives you an idea. Now, if you're not doing millions and millions and millions of sales, you probably aren't going to be able to go out and get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar credit line or loan. But what I'm teaching you, this funding strategy that we've got, this finance blueprint lets you determine all the stuff you need money for, and then item by item, I item find the easiest to get financing. Business credit cards pay for that, pay for that, pay for that, pay for that. Equipment financing pays for that. Commercial real estate pay financing pays for that. Then I have payroll and a down payment on the equipment. And that's going to be this much. And it's way easier to get a loan and a credit line for that smaller amount than the whole amount you were trying to tackle all to begin with. So this is actually a finance plan that will work and it will get you the money that you need the easy way and then leave the hardest kind of financing, the loans and credit lines, just for to pay for the stuff that business credit won't pay for the easy way to get money um, or that uh, the other kind of financing, like specialized financing, like commercial real estate financing won't do as well. So the next thing is now, now that we have an idea of the type of funding that we need, the next thing we need to do is we need to truly do a risk assessment on our own business. We need to truly look at our risk and be able to reduce that risk to make it easier for us to get the money that we need. So we start just by looking generally at how our business is structured. Do we have an LLC? Do we have a corporation? Do we have a separate address for the business, separate phone number, a bank account? Do we have a business license? If not, go get one. It's easy from, from your, your, your secretary of state or, or in your, from your county. It's super easy to get a license. It just makes you look more credible. Have you built your business credit profile and score? Again, that's why building out this plan helps because you're getting the money you need, but you're also building business credit. And by building your business credit profile and score, that's going to help make you more lendable. Have you checked your business credit reports? Are they good? How are your scores? Do you have a bunch of items reporting? Okay, how are your financials? 
Do you have your P&L for this year ready to go? Do you have your balance sheet from last year ready to go or from this quarter ready to go and for the end of the year ready to go? Are you going to be ready to file tax returns and file tax returns on time? Are your taxes going to show a profit for the business or a loss? Because if you show a thousand dollar loss, then it's way more harmful than you think it may be. If you're trying to go get business financing and you're showing a loss that you're losing money, it's going to be really hard to get the best kind of loans and loans out there. So as you get ready to file your taxes, just keep in mind, in my world, being in charge of helping people get money, the difference between a business losing $1,000 and making $1,000 in profit is significant. The people that make the 1000 in profit get term loans and SBA loans. The people that don't are paying 30, 40, 50, 60% interest on high-risk loans. So it's a big deal. Show a little profit. Yeah, you might have to pay four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in taxes. It's worth it for the funding opportunities it unlocks for you. So make sure your business is structured. Do a Google search for your business. It, what, what do you find? If you find yourself on Yellow Pages, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, does your address, is your bit phone number, is your business name all congruent? Everywhere you find your business listed, does the information look the same? Is the secretary of state information the same? Is your bank account, what's on the bank account statement the same? Make sure all of that information is congruent. Sounds stupid. It ain't. I'll tell you why. Because the number one reason that you're going to get denied is because banks think the application is fraudulent. Yeah, they actually think you and your business aren't real. And it's because they look at your application info and they compare it to all these places they find your business online, including secretary of state. When it doesn't match, they can't verify your business is even valid. And that gets people turned down. That's the biggest reason people get turned down. So make sure your information is congruent. Make sure you're building that business credit. Make sure all that fundability stuff is in line, right? Separate address, separate phone number, separate email address for the business, no Gmail. Make sure that you look credible on paper. Make sure you have those financials. If you want some of the easiest financing to get, they're going to ask for your bank statements. Do you have your bank statements available? I keep a folder on my desktop with all that stuff, a P&L, a balance sheet, bank statements, and it's easy for me to get financing when I want it because all the stuff they ask me for, I already have to be able to send to them. So again, now it comes down to doing a risk assessment. Where are you right now? What do you think lenders will think about your business? What do you need to improve and fix to become more lendable? Okay, these are the things we want to address now before we start to go to apply. Now, let's talk about some types of financing to consider. Again, one, business credit cards. Won't go down that road again. We've talked elaborately about vendor credit, auto financing, Visa, MasterCard, Universal Credit. You can use anywhere and the purposes of that. Another type of financing is, again, what I call specialty financing. It's financing for the purpose of something, buying inventory, buying equipment, buying real estate, for example. If we're buying a, an asset of some sort, there's usually money specifically for the purpose of buying that stuff. The next thing that we look at are business loans. And business loans are primarily based on three things, cash flow, credit, or collateral. So you ask yourself, which of those do you have? Do you have good personal credit? No, that's okay. Do you have a credit partner that has good credit? Do you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a family member, a, a spouse? Do you have a kid? Do you have a grandparent? Do you have a potential investor, a friend? Do you have somebody else that will let you use their credit to qualify for credit lines? If so, there's a great program called Credit Line Hybrid that can help you actually get there. Okay, maybe your strength is that you have consistent cash flow. Well, that opens up revenue lending, merchant cash advances, term loans, credit lines through Bluevine or Fundbox, for example. Some of my favorite ones. So now we're getting money just because our business has consistent cash flow, which could be powerful for us. Or the third one is collateral. Do we have anything that is an asset worth money? Do we have it? Does our spouse, does somebody else have it that we will be able to pledge as collateral? What can that be? Name an asset. Stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRA, cryptocurrency, inventory, equipment, real estate, residential real estate, commercial real estate, vehicles, account receivables, purchase orders. Uh, what do you have in the business or personally that's worth money, that's an actual asset? Now, typically that asset can be leveraged to be able to get you financing as well. So when I'm trying to look at the type of funding that's available, I'm really drilling down what my strength is. Is my strength cash flow? Is my strength credit? Is my strength collateral? And by knowing where my strength is, that's going to tell me the type of funding that gets unlocked for me. So I think of it like cylinders, right? So if I have cash flow, then I turn the lock and all of these cash flow options open up. 
But now credit is still locked because my credit's not good. But if I have somebody else's credit that I just said, like a family member or friend, then that gets unlocked and all of this funding opens up for me. Or if I improve my personal credit, the same thing happens. Then I look at collateral. Well, maybe I don't have any collateral. So this, this is locked. But then let's say I start letting my customers pay me on terms. It helps me get more customers and it unlocks account receivable financing. Now this unlocks and now we've got extra extra types of financing open up there in that category. So it's just unlocking these different categories of funding based on our cash flow, our credit, and our collateral. And the more of those we have unlocked, then the more types of financing become available. So for example, SBA is available if we have good credit and we have cash flow and tax returns and we have collateral. Maybe you're not there, that's okay. By knowing what it takes to get there, now you can get yourself set up right now, right? So I'm looking to buy a new home next year. And knowing that, I'm already talking to my buddy that's the mortgage broker. I'm saying what needs to be done. Like part of my income is W-2, part of it's 1099. I'm moving my money around to move more of my money to W-2. I'm doing the things that need to be done to set myself up for success. So in a year, I'm able to get that loan. I've been in finance a long time. That's my knowledge. That's my experience. That's what you should be doing too. You should be looking with this plan of what's ahead and then setting your business up right now to be credible, to be fundable, to know if you have cash flow, credit, or collateral, which of those you can get, to be working on fixing the other two, other C's that you might not have. Credit's damaged, fix it. Find somebody else with good credit. Don't have collateral or assets, start letting your customers pay you on terms. Start acquiring assets or find other people with assets that you can leverage instead. Don't have cash flow, work on building the cash flow for the business. Use Work on using business credit to pay for the stuff you can pay to go out and start making money to start generating the cash flow, which opens up more financing for you, right? So one of our clients, Thelma Sample, did this. Uh, sold a, an old pickup truck and a flat screen TV, okay? Got started building business credit, used business credit to pay for yard signs and flyers to promote tax seminars. They do like tax, uh, they do like tax remediation where people that are a problem with taxes, they work with the IRS to resolve them. People show up to the seminar. They sell those people. They make money. They pay off the credit. Now they're doing more of that at bigger scale, at bigger scale. Now they have enough money to go do Facebook ads and Google ads. They continue to do it. So they're leveraging what they have to be able to turn around and open up more areas of funding. Now they're generating revenue. Now all these revenue options open up for them. So this is a good way to do it. Use business credit to be able to get the money coming in the door. With the money coming in the door, that unlocks more of the financing opportunities for you. So in this stage, we're really coming into figuring out the types of money that's available. Lines of credit and loans are all going to be based on credit, cash flow, or collateral. So we want to try to get tax returns to show a profit. We want to be working on improving our personal credit or have a guarantor that has good credit. And anything we can acquire, anything we could do to get assets, all of those things are then going to open up the door to make it easier for us to get funding. If you want to see a bunch of funding that's available, then we've got a great guide on 27 different ways to get funding to grow your business. Let me see if I can find that one for you really quick. I'm not even sure if uh, if I can. Let me see if I find your funding. Maybe this is it right here. Uh, yep. So this link, it's called creditsuite.com forward slash 27, the number two, seven. And two, <laughs> two, Seven. Now I figured it out. I figured out how to put 27 on my hands. It took me a little bit, but I got it done. So uh, this is a great guide. It gives you 27 different ways to fund your business. A lot of ways you might not even knew were possible. So scan that QR code or go to creditsuite.com forward slash 27 to get that. So let's recap this. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out what our goal is, right? We need to figure out how much, we need to figure out what our revenue goal is going to be. And we need to start working it backwards to figure out how many people we have to talk to a day to get to that goal. And what are we going to do? What's our marketing plan? Here's something I've learned in doing. I've run a lot of businesses, right? I've exited businesses, seven-figure businesses, eight-figure businesses. I've been doing this for a bit. And the one thing that I can tell you is that, you know, things don't just magically change. COVID was an exception. But normally, you're not going to just miraculously make more revenue next year unless you're doing things directly to cause that revenue to increase. If you don't do much different than what you did this year, you're going to make the same money. Maybe, maybe less, maybe a little more. I don't know, but it's not going to change very much. If you want to exponentially start growing, you have to take steps to do that. And that's how we do it. We figure out where do we want our revenue to be? 
How many customers do we have to talk to? We walk that down. What's our marketing plan to get in front of those customers? What's this going to cost us money wise? Now that we know what it's going to cost us money wise, now we're able with these projections to come in and to be able to start figuring out the sources of funding. What can business credit pay for? It's easy to get. What can direct types of funding like equipment and inventory financing pay for? Then what's left over that we need a loan or a credit line for? And now we can figure out the loan and credit line we can get by looking at one of our C's, cash flow, credit, or collateral. Which do we have? Do we not have one? Work on fixing it, right? Let's work on getting our bank statements good where we're not overdrawing our account, which shows some kind of profit on the tax return. Let's improve our credit and use the credit of somebody else. Let's start acquiring assets by letting our customers pay us on time and accumulate account receivables or uh, use somebody else's assets to qualify for financing. Now we're able to come in and start getting that financing, the loans and credit lines for the little bit of stuff that business credit and the direct kind of financing uh, wouldn't be able to get for us. And again, you can scan this really quick, creditsuite.com forward slash 27, and that will get you access to our guide on 27 killer ways to be able to fund your business. And that's it. That really is your business financing plan for 2024. Bertha, what's up? Thanks for coming in. Bertha was just in one of our challenges. So Bertha, it's good to see you again. And Jeremy says, hey, makes perfect sense on not trying to get all your money from one place, but actually breaking it down and getting it from multiple places. It's such a brilliant strategy. We call it funding stacking. Funding stacking is instead of trying to get all your money from one place, we start getting a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. We start stacking these loans, these credit lines, these business credit cards. And when you do it right, you get exponentially more money than you ever would have gotten from one source. And you have more lines of credit, more credit cards, more loans to take advantage of more opportunities as well. So don't forget creditsuite.com forward slash 27 to get our guide on 27 killer ways to fund your business and creditsuite.com forward slash EIN for the step-by-step -step to be able to build your business credit. Let's make this the best year ever. I will miss you all next week. I'll be, I take an annual ski trip with my kids in Utah every year in Park City. We're heading out there Saturday, but I'll be back in the new year to talk to you about all types of cool ways to be able to get the money to grow your business. So thank you very much for tuning in.